Hey everybody, it's Zach here from Theed Boys, and welcome to my solo armadillo guide. Fighting the armadillo boss in the God Wars dungeon can be a little bit intimidating for beginners since you need fairly high combat, and there feels like there's a lot going on once you get in the room, but overall, this is not a very complicated fight, and you can make some solid cash here. In this guide, I'm going to start, as always, with the requirements and the recommended stats for fighting Arma. Then I'll go into what you should bring as your gear and your inventory. Afterwards, I'll show how to get to God Wars Dungeon and Armadillo's Eerie, then how to actually fight the boss. Once we've gone through all that, I think we can discuss the loot that you get from Creera. To access the God Wars Dungeon, you need to partially complete the Troll Stronghold quest, but only enough to get past the arena. You are going to need either a Trollheim Teleport, which requires the completion of Eager's Ruse, or some climbing boots to get up there. If it's your first time in the God Wars Dungeon, you will also need to bring a rope with you. And you need either 60 agility or 60 strength to get into the dungeon, which really shouldn't be a high requirement on either end if you're ready to fight Arma. I suggest 90 plus range to fight Arma, especially if you're trying to solo, but even in a duo, you both want to have 90 plus if you can. With any bossing, as you'll hear me say in any other bossing video, the higher combat you have, the better. Kills are going to be faster and easier. You should also have 70 plus defense to wear any of the armor that you need. The higher defense you have, the less damage you're going to take. There's also some mage hits that you take in here, so that's kind of the case for your magic level too. In general, if you're really high combat, you'll have an easier time compared to low combat. Here's a look at the gear that I bring with me, and then a more budget version of this gear. If you decide that you don't want to use chinchampas, I will be discussing during the fight what you would do instead, but without chins, you're not going to get very many kills here, unless you're with a large group. I use black chinchampas for faster kills, though if you're a hardcore Iron Man, or if you don't have funds for the black chins, you could use red chinchampas, which will get the job done. It will make your kills slower, of course. No matter what chins you pick, you don't have to take a ton with you, in fact you don't want to. If you die there, you lose all your chins, which can be a huge loss, trust me. As for your non chinchampa weapon, you're going to want to bring your Twisted Bow if you're really wealthy, or an Armor Crossbow is a fine option too. A Rune Crossbow could get you a kill in here, it's just going to be a fairly tough kill. Even if you're bringing chins, you want to bring another powerful ranged weapon with you, so you will see an Armor Crossbow in my inventory later. I don't really suggest fighting Kree off of a Slayer task, but if you're not using a Slayer Helm, then you would want to use a Varric's Helm for some bonus defense. In your cape slot, I suggest the Ava's Assembler, though an Ava's Accumulator is going to work if you don't have your Assembler yet. Range cape's not bad for defense and prayer, but the Ava's device will help with more damage. A Necklace of Anguish is best for range, and an Amulet of Fury is also going to do fine. Same with that range cape, it's got good defense and prayer, so if you find yourself taking a lot of damage, it could help out. If you're bringing an armor crossbow, you should bring Diamond Dragon Bolts with you, make sure they're enchanted of course. Or if you're bringing a Tivo as your other range weapon, you want to go with Dragon Arrows. You don't really have to attack much with these, but the extra damage can come in handy and save you some money. Armor Chestplate and Chain Skirt are the best options for your top and bottom, but you may not have that yet, for example, if you're an Iron Man, so God Dehyde will get the job done here, and even Carols will work. In your shield slot, you usually want to lean defensive over offensive since shields are so good on the defensive side. You can kind of get cranked in this room, so an Ellie is your best option, but a Dragonfire Shield works really well too. If you can't afford either of those, Crystal Shield is a good option because it is untradeable, so it's not going to cost you a thing. Pagasian boots are best in slot, and ranger boots are right after that, but there's not a huge price gap there, so I imagine if you can afford rangers, you can just afford your pegs. God Dehyde boots are also a good option. Barrel's gloves are best for range, and honestly, if you're at the point in your account that you think you're ready to solo Arma, but you don't have Barrel's gloves, go get your Barrel's gloves. If you refuse, Black Dehyde vamps could replace them. An archer's ring is your best choice for ring, please imbue it, imbuing your ring makes it twice as good as it was before, and if you're getting your ass kicked in there, you could instead bring a ring of suffering, also imbue that, it has better defense, and the recoil damage could help a little bit. At this point, if you still have any questions about gear, be sure to leave them in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible on that. Here's a look at the inventory that I bring with me. As I mentioned earlier, you do want to bring a strong range weapon like a Tebow or a crossbow for when you're not using chins on Creera. The blowpipe though is for the minions. A lot of players use blood spells to heal up on the minions, but even if you do that, you kind of want to bring a blowpipe to finish them off when you're at full health so you don't waste any runes. I use dragon darts most of the time when I solo, but adding darts do work fine. I prefer to have a little bit more time between kills just to kind of reset myself, especially if I'm using my alt to bring supplies. It gives me a little bit of time to actually run to the God Wars dungeon. If you don't have an assembler though, definitely don't use dragon darts. I bring the Sarah Doman Mage Arena 1 cape and a cheap Zami robe bottom as my Sarah and Zami items in the dungeon. I usually end up dropping both of these once I get to the room just to get a little bit of extra space. That's why I choose the untradeable cape which you can get a lot of really easy and then the cheap robe bottom. Don't forget that if you're not bringing an armor crossbow or wearing an armor top or bottom, you're going to have to bring some sort of armadillo item or you will get attacked by all the Avancies in here. 
You do need to bring a Mithril Grapple to get in the room. If you're using a T-Bow and Chins, don't forget you're going to have to bring a Crossbow too so you can grapple your way in. You could potentially bring a really cheap Crossbow and just drop it for inventory space. Petroleum Teleport is what I use to travel to God Wars Dungeon. We'll discuss more travel methods in the next section, but if you plan on camping God Wars Dungeon bosses, you should really unlock Trollheim Teleports. Once you finish the quest, you can get Scrolls of Redirection from the Nightmare Zone. You can use them on a House Teleport, and it makes a Trollheim Teleport tab. My max cape is used for house teleports, but it also acts as a holy wrench in the inventory, which is nice for prayer points. Also, if I'm in a pinch, it can be put on as a ring of life while still picking up ammo, like a range cape. The other option when not bringing a max cape is to bring two Trollheim teleport tabs with you. You can revert the second tab to a house teleport after you tell you to Trollheim. This will also add a free inventory slot, which you can bring an extra potion with. I use an ecumenical key to get an armor's room. You could get 40 kills in Avancies outside, but that's going to take a little bit of kills from your tasks and could also use some of your supplies. So I do suggest using a key and also having at least one extra key in your bank if you die. You have enough time to kill Avancies and get back in and grab your stuff. It's just a little less hectic if you have another key and can get in there really quickly. In my rune pouch, I bring lava, water, and nature runes. I stay on the standard spell book and this lets me use bones to peaches and alks. If you don't have the bones to peaches spell, you could bring bones to peaches tabs with you. Maybe in that spot you saved by bringing a second troll heme teleport for the house telly. A lot of players instead bring blood spells and heal off the minions. I like to stick to the standard spellbook mostly because I use my alt to bring supplies if I'm trying to have a longer trip. But if you don't have an alt to bring or you don't get enough kills to get back in the room, blood spells are a good way to lengthen your trips. It is a little more costly though. Don't forget you also have your blowpipe spec to heal up on the minions. I bring a bracelet of slaughter with me to try and extend some tasks. Anytime you're about to kill Kree or a minion, you can throw in the bracelet quick. It might not count towards your tasks giving you a few more kills on tasks. I'm pretty laid back with the use of the Bracelet of Slaughter. Right around 50 Arma kills is what you can expect from one Avancy's task, and that's usually a pretty decent solo Arma sitting for me. For the potions, I have 3-4 to four ranging potions, about 7 Sarah Brews, and 7-8 to eight Restores. This ratio is likely to change for you as you get more comfortable. If you find yourself taking too much damage, you might want to bring extra brews, but if you're running out of Restores first, then it's the other way around. If this is your first time going to God Wars Dungeon, don't forget, you need to bring a rope. Only for the first time, though. There's a few ways to get to the God Wars dungeon. The main method is using that Trollheim teleport. It teleports you to the top of the mountain right outside of the God Wars dungeon, and then you have a few agility shortcuts that could get you to the bottom, or you have to make the run down. Still, it's a very short run. Towards the end of it, as you get close to God Wars dungeon, don't forget to turn on your protect from range to protect from the trolls, and you'll be in the cave in no time. If you don't have this teleport, you could walk all the way up from Berthorp, but you're going to need to bring climbing boots with you, and it's going to be a longer trip overall. After you've passed the trolls, you need to either push past this rock, which takes 60 strength, or use the 60 agility shortcut. The shortcut is slightly faster, doesn't really make a huge difference though. Make sure you protect from melee past these ice wolves. If it's your first time, you'll have to talk to the soldier, and then you gotta use a rope to get in. But once you're in the cave, you can run south, and you'll find an area to grapple. Let's go ahead and take a look at an actual trip and fight at the armor boss. When you go into the dungeon, you need to make sure that you have your Zami, Saradomen, and armor pieces on, or you will be attacked. Bandos is not really needed for armor since those minions are on the other side of the dungeon though. Once you get past the grappling area, you can drop your mithril grapple for envy space. And standing in this area by the door is a safe spot so you could drop your Zami and your Sarah item here and you really shouldn't have any problems. Your quick prayers should be on protect from range, rigor, and preserve. If you don't have rigor, you can use eagle eye. Kree can use all three attack styles but has a max hit of 71 with range. So if Kree's in the room and you don't have your protect from range on, you will probably die. Turn on your quick prayers and head on in. I choose to take the southwest corner of the room. Technically, any corner could work though. Kree does have an attack that will push you back, so no matter what weapon you're using, you do want to stand in a corner. If you don't have chins, there isn't much strategy at this point. Attack Kriera and eat up when you get cranked. Anytime that you want to eat, it is smart to stand under Kriera for a little bit so he can't attack you as much. But I understand sometimes it gets a little hectic and you're just trying to make sure you spam a brew or two. If you're using Chinchampas, you should be attacking the melee minion that also followed you to the corner and letting the area damage hit the boss. Kriera will not use his melee attack if he's being targeted. This means between each Chinchampa throw, you need to click on Kriera to attack, but then back on the minion before you throw another Chinchampa. This way you only throw Chinchampas at the minion, but you're still targeting Kree between each attack, so he won't use his melee attack. If you don't do this, you take a lot more damage during the fight, but technically you'll do just as much damage if you just click on the minion and have at it, but you'll likely get KO'd. Turning on your game sounds makes it really obvious when he uses a melee attack because he just screams. Once the minion's down on your first kill, very likely the other minions are in strange spots around the room since they were roaming before you came in. You can just switch over to your other weapon and attack Kree normally. If you're looking for how to chin a second minion, moving over to a different one, we'll look at that in the next kill. 
Sometimes you'll manage to kill him before the melee minion respawns. If not though, the melee minion will run up to you and you can just start chaining a second time. Once Kree goes down, just switch to your blowpipe or your blood spells and take out the minions. Flight is the melee minion. This is easy to spot because he'll follow you around the room. Flockadeer is the ranger and his attacks are a simple spear throw. And Wingman is the major who uses the not spear throw. It's, it looks more like darts, but it's a magic attack. Like all the minions in the God Wars dungeon, these all attack at the same speed, so with a little bit of practice, it's not very hard to flick your overheads and prevent damage from all of them. If you see that they're attacking in the same tick, then you need to step under one of them right before it attacks you, while protecting from the other one. Overall, they are fairly weak though, so you could just tank if needed. Practicing flicking your prayers can be tough if you've not done it before, but this is a great place to practice, and the better you do, the longer your trips will be. After really any kill you do, you should check if you can use the altar to pray up, but your first kill in there, you'll be good to go. You can only use it every 10 minutes though. This altar can very much help out the length of trips. Try to make sure you're using the altar at basically zero prayer points every time. Also, you can right click this altar and teleport out of the room. That's the only way to get out of the room other than a teleport you brought with you. You can't just go open the door. Let's take another look at the kill quick. Start off in the corner and make sure your quick prayers are on before it respawns. Kree has a minute and a half respawn timer, but if you're using Runelight, you should have a respawn timer plugin. When standing in the southwest corner here, you are going to be close to the ranger when it spawns, so you can immediately throw a few blowpipe hits on it just to deal some damage and maybe inflict venom. Be sure not to kill it though, so that it doesn't respawn while you're fighting Kree. If you're having trouble getting Kree to fly towards you, you can just take a step out from the corner and back in. Often that will trigger him and you'll start moving. As Kree gets close, you can go right to Chins. I do like to try and throw one quick bolt hit on Kree first to try to avoid that melee hit that he's already targeted on you. It takes a little bit of timing to make sure that you hit Kree early enough that he won't attack you, but also not too early so that he's out of range in the Chinchampa attacks. After that, I switch over to Chins and start the process over, attacking the minion, but making sure to target Kree between every attack. Once you kill the melee minion this time, you could make your way to the east, line Kree up with the major, and use Chins again. This isn't quite as simple as the corner, since the major isn't that close to the other corner. You either have to walk back every time that Kree hits you, or line yourself perfectly on the south wall so that Kree pushes you south instead of pushing you east. I normally choose not to use the second minion for a couple of reasons. One, it's a little bit more complicated, and I appreciate the simplicity of the Kree fight up to this point, but it's also a really good mix of using chins to speed up your kill, but not using a ton of chin choppas per kill, because it gets a little bit expensive, especially if you're using black chins. You do get faster kills overall if you're using the second minion, though. If you knock out both minions and Kree's not dead yet, you just gotta go back to the first spot and do it all over again. That's everything to do with the actual fight. If you're wondering how I use my ult to supply, that's very straightforward too. You need at least 40 armor kills to get back in, which takes about 8 to 10 KC, depending on how many minions you need to kill. Once you've got at least 40, you could teleport out with the altar between kills and just head over to that safe area shown before, where your ult should be hanging out. Trade any supplies you might need over to your main, usually brews, restores, and ranging potions. Could be more chins or even a brace of the slaughter though. And then give all the drops that you've gotten to your ult to free up some space. If you have any more questions about fighting Kriera, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible on that. Now let's go ahead and talk about some loot. I'm going to be giving my numbers based on using black chins and just the one melee minion, but we'll discuss how the other methods could change your kills per hour and the cost per kill. Let's start off with the bad part, the cost per kill. I tend to use about 18 chinchampas per kill, which are currently 3.1k a piece, and I'll admit that's a little bit cheaper than they were 4 or 5 months ago. But that's almost 56k per kill just in chinchampas. The inventory that I showed earlier is currently about 130k in potions, and one inventory I average about 15 Kree kills. So that makes for a little bit under 10k per kill on the potions, and then we add in the runes and whatnot, I'll round to about 10k more per kill. That plus the chins we're looking at 66k per kill is what I tend to spend. We also have scales, darts, and bolts, so we can say right around 70k per kill overall. I'm averaging 20 kills an hour, which means I'm spending 1.4 mil per hour just to kill Kree like this. Sounds like great profit, doesn't it? Keep in mind with lower stats and lower offensive gear, you're going to get slower kills and spend more money per kill. Unless you're not using chins, but then you're going to get very, very slow kills. And trust me, the speed of kill is going to make up for it. For the profit per hour, we're just going to go off of the four main uniques from Arma because that's what really makes up the difference. You have a 1 out of 128 chance of hitting the armor table on Kree, which you either get the helm, chest plate, or chain skirt. This means that every 384 kills, you would get one of each armor piece if you got everything right on the drop rate. At 20 kills an hour, that's just over 19 hours for all three pieces, and the three pieces currently add up to 76.7 mil at the moment. So when you divide that by the 19 hours to get them, that's just over 4 mil per hour in drops. 
We can also add that Arma Hilt though too. The Hilt is about 17 mil right now and is a 1 in 508 drop. This means you get one every 25 and a half hours that you're in here as long as you're getting out on the drop rate, which adds right about 650k per hour in drops. Not a huge factor for being so rare, but it is an add-on nevertheless. So we're up to 4.6 million drops per hour, as long as you get everything on the drop rate, which keep in mind you could get really lucky and maybe get more, you could get unlucky and not get all those items though, which really blows. If we subtract the 1.4 mil or so originally, we have about 3.2 mil per hour from Creera. So even if you find yourself getting unlucky with those drops, you can do well over 2 mil an hour here, no problem. The problem with armor is you need a little bit of money to dump into it unless you get super lucky early on and just get a great drop in your early KC. That way you have some money to spend on more chins, but you basically just hemorrhage cash until you get that huge drop. So if you get super unlucky, you lose a lot of money for a while and it's kind of rough. But it only takes a little bit of luck for a quick 40 mil drop in there too. Not to mention that there is a really cool Creera pet that you can get at a 1 in 5,000 rate. One of my favorite pets in the game, no doubt. Still looking for it though. I believe that's all the information that I really wanted to give you about fighting Arma. If you still have any questions about any sections of the guide, please let me know in the comments section below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible on that. Other than that, thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. I hope you got some useful information out of this Arma guide, and best of luck on your Arma grind.